Well, welcome to Coffee with Job on Monday morning. If you're in Australia, it's Sunday evening if you're in the UK and Sunday afternoon if you're in the US. Uh, we are looking at Job chapter 29 for the first three days of this Christmas week. And it's about the prime of life. I belong to something called Amazon Prime and it's meant to mean that this is the best. You know, this is the best you get first class service and all that kind of stuff. Well, Job here talks about being in the prime of life. And, and let me just say about chapter 29 overall that one of our great curses in life and in modern life is the shallowness of so many things. Well, this is Job's 11th speech and it is it's certainly not shallow. In chapter 29, he looks back on his former happy life, the prime of life, and in chapter 30, he moans about his present condition. It's a lament. It's really an appeal to God. I was reading in C.S. Lewis his reflections on the Psalms that he talks about how the Christian view of Judgment Day is God coming to judge the sinner. And the, the Old Testament view, I think it's a bit s simple, but there's a truth in this, or what he calls the Jewish view, is of the sinner seeking vindication from God, saying, you know, I've been treated badly. And I think there's some element in this, and that's certainly true of Job. But this is a lament, and it's like Pibroch. Now, those of you who don't know Pibroch, I won't, um, I won't pain you with it. It's classical bagpipe music, and it really is lament. It's very much an acquired taste. Personally, I love it. And in this lament, I think there's plenty for us to learn. So let's just do the first six verses. Job continued his discourse. How I long for the months gone by, for the days when God watched over me, when his lamp shone on my head and by his light I walked through darkness. Oh, for the days when I was in my prime, when God's intimate friendship blessed my house, when the Almighty was still with me and my children were around me, when my path was drenched with cream, and the rock poured out from me streams of olive oil. Who knows, but some of you may be thankful for and enjoying that just now. How I long for the months gone by. Now, he was not, and this is important, he is not here just viewing the past through rose-colored glasses. He's, this was really the case. Job was really in a very pri privileged and blessed position. And I think there's one lesson that we can learn. Those of us who experience that, that can be taken from us at a stroke. We need to remember that. And those of us who've lost that, we do need to be careful. The days when he was in his prime, these were great days. What made them great days? What makes you in your prime? God watched over him. His, stent, his steps were drenched in cream. He was, uh, as we'll come to see tomorrow, he was the most respected man. By the way, if, if you can see this just now, this is just amazing. There's just this incredible rainbow behind me. Um, and the rainbow, it's a sign of God's covenant, isn't it? It's a sign of God's blessing. It's a sign of God not going to curse. What a shame that the rainbow has been taken and turned into a sign, to be honest, of sexual perversion and turned into a sign of going against what God teaches. But the rainbow is a sign of God's covenant. I just love it. I, I just love the creativity and beauty of the creator. God's intimate friendship blessed my house. The rainbow was over my house. The pot of gold was at the end of the rainbow. My path was drenched with cream and the rock poured out for me streams of olive oil. And it's gone. Sometimes counting something enables you to see what you have lost. Sometimes you don't even notice what you have lost until you have lost it. But here's the key here. We don't just look to the past, we look to what is to come. The years that the locusts have eaten, the Lord can restore. And then I think about it in this way. I think about what Christ gave up. We remember him coming down at Christmas, the incarnation, God becoming man. He came from the glory. He came from the glorious kingdom. Though he was God, yet he thought not equality with God something to be grasped, but he made himself of no reputation. Taking the form of a servant, he became obedient even unto death. It's just extraordinary what Christ gave up for us. He became poor that we might become rich. 
spiritually speaking and indeed in every way. All right, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I'm going to leave you with David Henderson and Laura Ferguson from my old church, St. Peter, singing Oh Holy Night. I regard this as stunningly beautiful. God bless you and see you tomorrow. stars are brightly shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Only the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul Thrill of hope, the weary soul rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, he. Thank you.